What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, another video. My last video, I was a little bit disappointed with the results, so we're gonna be doing that one again, but without chameleon cells. And I'm adding another color to add a little bit of contrast to the black and white. I uh, was reading the comments and a lot of you had a lot of good comments and I completely agree with you guys that I kind of ruined it when I added the chameleon cells. So we're gonna go and me and you together we're gonna redo this. And this time, I'm not gonna mess it up. So the colors, as you saw, I have the titanium white again, the onyx black, and then I have a turquoise. They're all mixed the same as they were last time. Uh, five to one paint, and then this is the pouring medium that I used. It's this Artist Loft pouring medium because it, it gives me a really good consistency that kind of marries up to uh, what I'm after, which is like a trace of zero, basically. So we're gonna start by just layering this cup, small layers, right? And I think I'm gonna add this turquoise in between every layer of black and white to see what, what that does. That is what is going on today. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing fantastic. I'm having a great day. I mean, it's always a great day when I'm in the studio painting and having a chat with you awesome humans. So I'm always having a good time when that's happening. So I've been entertaining the idea of trying to put my mixes and ratios in the descriptions of my future videos. Because, I mean, I always end up with a whole lot of questions as to how I mix the paints. And a lot of people that are new to the channel or new to bloom pours don't know the difference between the pouring medium for my blooms and the pouring medium for my standard acrylic pours. So I feel like it would be even more beneficial and informative for you guys for me to add that information down in the description. Because I know I talk about it, but I don't actually go into a whole lot of detail about it. So if you guys ever wanna see a mixing video from me, just let me know in the comments below. I'll try to do, you know, a quick, like a search-based video on how I mix my paints and some of you are even interested in like the technique that I use when I blow when I blow out my blooms so if that's something that you guys want to see you know converse with me I try my best to answer questions um, as the channel's growing it's getting harder and harder to do so but I do I do try I really do so we got our cup layered Stability of my shoulder and elbow isn't very good when I'm holding it up for an extended period of time, but we're gonna do the same thing. Kind of spilling it off to the side. And I'm gonna try to keep it as centered as possible. You can see already my hand is wandering, so I'm trying to find a good spot maybe to rest my elbow. And having this kick spinner isn't helping very much. All right, cool. But yeah, as you saw, I put a bunch of white in the bottom because I'm hoping that that white comes out towards the end. I mean, obviously the white's coming out right now, but I want more white towards the end of this pour. I hope everybody's doing great though. I'm very grateful to have you guys. It's really cool to be able to like pursue your passion with a bunch of like-minded individuals. But yeah, we're not gonna do any nonsense with chameleon cells in this one. 
This one's gonna be, hopefully, as close to a reproduction of the last one as I can get. Because the last one was really cool. Until I muddied it up. But you know what? There's no failed pours. It was an error in my judgment. I should have, I knew better. I should have left that. But, you know. That's a problem that a lot of us have, is knowing when to stop. And I still have that problem, y'all. So, if you are suffering from that, don't feel bad, because I'm suffering with it still to this day. After pouring for years, I still sometimes don't know when to stop. But yeah, we're getting some really cool spirals going on. Pretty soon I'm going to be stopping this stream. Let me try to get it dead center. For the end. And, oh, and we're done. All right, yeah, that looks really cool. I like the way that looks a whole lot. All right, man. So let's make sure that that very center of that swirl is right in the middle of the canvas. And we're gonna do some light spins. There's no silicone in this, so it touching the canvas isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> Look at it, this reminds me of one of those old movies where like they're trying to hypnotize you. <laughs> Maybe I'm showing my age a little bit. But yeah. Yeah, see, now this looks really similar to that one. And then I went and messed it up. But we ain't doing it this time. We're gonna leave it this way. I'm thinking I'm gonna spin it just a little bit more. Try to open up these layers around the edges. We have a lot of dark going on on the outside, and maybe I can spin some of that off. So let me change this direction of the spin. Oh, I moved the whole thing. Look at that. And let's see if I can not get covered in paint and put it back there. Well, we didn't succeed in not getting covered in paint, y'all. All right. Well, this will be a shorter video, but I kind of really enjoy this talk through of my method and style so you guys get a better idea of what's going on in my head and how I come to the conclusions I come. So let's get down there. We're gonna check this thing out. I think it looks amazing. It looks fantastic. I love it. That blue added just enough of a pot to, to matter. So let's get down there and check it out. This is that lovely thing right there. It's got some really interesting lines and details in it. And I feel like this is like one of the easiest pours that somebody that just gets started could do. No silicone, no oils, no additives. Paint and pouring medium. If you want to watch another video just like this, click the screen right now and I'll see you there.